Hi guys, it's Blackie. So, what do you do on your day off when it's a wet, rainy day and half the stuff that you needed to get done ain't going to be able to get done because of weather? Well, you start looking at new stuff. And as an early Christmas present to me, I got me a new skillet. I got the 8-inch Pathfinder stainless steel skillet. Went to SRO, ordered it off the line, and got in the skillet. I've been wanting one of these for a little bit as a pack skillet. I've already got a big heavy skillet you've seen in a lot of my videos. And I've got a much smaller 5 inch skillet that I've had for 25 years that I use a lot and that's my all time favorite. But I've seen this uh, used in a lot of videos and I've seen it in person used several times now and I really like the design. One of the things I like the most about it and what you'd really think Got lock and handle. That's handy. It's this thick bottom. Little thunder. All right. Got the lid, and the cold lid interests me, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. But this bottom is very thick, and that means it cooks more evenly. Not to bore you with a lot of thermal dynamics, but one of the big major problems with these cooking sets you see for camping is they're thin because you want to be light, light, light. I got to be as light as possible. The problem with that, and that's one of the reasons people went to using just boiling foods, was the fact you go from okay to burnt like that. Because the temperature changes far too easy in it. So if I had that sitting up there on those coals and it's good, it's good, it's good, it's gone way past heat and now it's burning everything. Everything sticks, everything burns, everything whatever, because there's no opportunity. Okay? A thick bottom avoids that because it heats more slowly and you get an opportunity to realize okay it's getting a little too hot the up curve versus the uh oh curve is kind of flattened out a little bit and that makes it a little bit better plus this would being folding everything makes a good pack skeleton i'm gonna make a cover for mine because it's gonna get irky on a fire and everything else but so what you gonna do blackie with your brand new skillet well of course we're gonna cook bacon so Let's cook some bacon. A little bit of water in the pot. Cut out my bacon. Getting a couple of slices of bacon. Cut them to pan size. Now put the bacon into the water. But Blackie, why did you put water in there? Well, keep them sticking initially. No grease in that pan. So I'm going to take and put the bacon into the hot water. And it's going to start cooking it. And more importantly, it's going to leach that grease out. And as that water starts to evaporate, probably have a little too much water to be honest, it'll, be, it'll transform from being water to grease. And therefore, fry the bacon. fairly quickly. Okay, now my bacon is getting close. Notice I just got small pieces of bacon. There's a reason for that. We'll get that in a minute. I want it fully done but not hard yet. That could have been bad. OK. 
Okay, now that you see, the bacon's basically done. I'm going to pull it up here at the top. I'm going to hold it and get rid of the bulk of the sacred bacon drippings. Not all of it, but a good deal of it. Leaning about that much. Left. Coat that bottom. Spread that out. Now I know some chef out there is going to say, but Blackie, you're doing that wrong. Obviously, I know, I know. In my day, this was called a conflagration, which meant it was all thrown in one pot and cooked together. Period. The bacon, the eggs, all of it cooked very quickly together like this. Instead of having separate bacon like table fare. You see, I just sit there and wipe it and wipe it. Spread it out. And voila, one conflagration, and we're done. And so, we have breakfast. Ain't pretty, but it's edible. Bacon. Excuse me for eating in front of you. Bacon, egg, etc. All in one. The bacon is fried first. You put the water in the pan. Put the bacon in. Let that begin to simmer down. The water will evaporate. It turns into grease. That starts frying the bacon. The bacon gets done frying. You pour off the bulk of the grease. Save it if you can. And then you dump the eggs on top of it. Once the bacon is 99% done. And voila. Sort of a. Not really an omelet. But you know what I mean. Lots of things you can do like this. I could throw in mushrooms, cheese, peppers, whatever. Right now at this point, whenever it's just about to come out, throw it in, stir it up, get it done. Eat right out of the pot. And then when I'm done, I throw water on it, throw it back into the thing, keep your fire going, and I get rid of it and clean the pot. One pot breakfast. Plus, since I use just like four or five slices of bacon. I've got bacon flavor in my eggs. I've got the bacon grease, just a little bit absorbed into them. So I've got a lot of flavor. Tastes really good. And at the same time, i got very little weight. So I can get a pound of bacon to last a couple of days instead of cooking all of it on the first day and you only had bacon the first day. I can keep a pound of bacon going for a week and have bacon every morning. Just a little something. Oh, well, guys. Now, let me finish this up and we'll clean the pot. Okay, now I'm done eating and I've just put a little bit of water into my pot. And I'll put it back on the heat and bring it up to a boil and let's clean the pot that way. Now I'm going to turn up the heat because we're going to be boiling now. Now I'm going to start See how it just starts coming loose on the bottom? No heavy scrubbing, no chemicals needed. Just a little bit of water and a little bit of heat. All that, what's called in fancy cooking, fond on the bottom that you get flavor out of. All I gotta do is just rub and it just starts melting right off of there. We often cut a stick, make like a spatula, 
for doing this. I'm very sorry. Spatula for you cooking aficionados. Now I just simply rub all these edges. Tip pan that way so I can see anything left behind on this side. Take for just a minute. <clears throat> now let that water come to a good boil. Tip the pan the other way. Make sure nothing's stuck. This boiling water is also sterilizing the pan. Now right here where the rivets are, that's going to give you a little bit of trouble. You're going to have to do like this. Scoot up and pull water up to it. And I think that'll be sufficient. <coughs> and voila. Okay, now. As you can see, I've cleaned it out. Yes, there's still little traces. Now, that's grease. Okay. At this moment, this is good enough to put up for the next meal. But, and here's a little rule of thumb that I have stuck by all of my life. Assume any camp cookware is contaminated. Let me say that again. Assume any camp cookware is contaminated and cook appropriately. And what that means in English is, I'm now going to pack this up, put my pack, and I'm going to go on. Three or four hours down, when it's time for me to eat, and I'm going to cook again, I'm going to bring out this pan, I'm going to wash it right quick with a little bit of canteen water and sand or whatever I got handy or an actual cleaning pad or whatever and I'm going to put water in it probably creek water and put it on the, my fire and I'm going to bring it to a boil I'm going to let it boil a good two or three minutes to kill any bacteria or whatever on that pan now I pour the water out now I bring it back up the fire now my pan's hot now I'm going to put my bacon into it or my water into it to cook my whatever and I'm going to start cooking my food because I have killed any bacteria inside this pan. Yes, I'm going to make an effort to try to keep it as clean as possible. But in the field, that's very difficult. So, it is just far better to assume all camp cook things are contaminated and proceed accordingly. Which means the beginning of every cooking cycle is decontamination. I'm going to take it, put it into it with boiling water. I'm going to put my utensils into that boiling water. I'm going to let them boil for a minute or two. You know, two, three minutes. That's more enough to kill any surface bacteria or whatever. Any food I've already scraped off. Now, these little bitty light little wispies, go look at Sean Kelly's skillet. Trust me, you'll survive. <laughs> he just throws it on the fire and burns it out. Well, you're doing the same thing. You're letting the heat kill it. But the point is, I'm sterilizing that skillet. I'm sterilizing that cook pot. And so I've learned to do that as a very effective way. So when I got my bush pot, and we've been traveling all day and it's time to eat, I'm going to fill that up with water and I'm going to put it on the fire and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Well, now I've got hot water to clean my utensils. I have heated up and cleaned my cooking pot. I've also made water that I could then set aside and strain and utilize for drinking because everything in it is dead. Remember, we talked about that in the past. So I've done multiple functions with one thing. But now that cooking pot is ready to utilize to eat. And one of the problems that I see with people that are doing outdoor cooking and things like that is we're coming at it from the modern mindset, like home, where I reach in the cabinet and I pull out the skillet and I put it on the stove. And do you automatically wash that skillet you just pulled out of the cabinet that you washed three weeks ago when you put it up and you ain't used it since? Probably not. You assume if it's in that cabinet, it's clean. Is it? Have you got a rodent in the house that may have ran through that pan? 
You don't know. But you're betting on the heat of the cooking to clean that pan as you're cooking. You're betting on heat for sterilization. That's a good, solid thing. Now, I'm not going to cook anything in this that I haven't cleaned it first, okay? And I'm not going to leave this sitting there with food in it. Now, remember old Nesma. <clears throat> and if you haven't read, I recommend you read Nesma. One of my favorite stories is the wise old woodsman's taking a lot of young greenhorns out on a fishing expedition. And they're all just like puppies. Man, they're ready to go and everything else. And they got up that morning and they're building a fire that's too big, shoving their pots and pans into it and getting them way too hot, burning and scorching everything. And then rather than cleaning their pots and pans, they just throw them to the side of the fire and they grab the rod and reel and they're gone. They're going fishing. Well... The old woodsman lets them go, and then he waits the fire to go down to coals, and then he brings out his cooking stuff, and he cooks himself a good breakfast. And then when they show back up, all you know, tired and ready to eat, he's kind of doctored up their cook pans so they got bugs and stuff in it. Now they got to go. They're tired. They're hungry. They're ready to eat. Now they got to go scrub and clean their pots and pans before they can eat again. So the lesson here is set yourself up for the next meal so running my fingers across that there's a fine not much but just a fine coating of baking grease good that'll help make this into a non-stick because every time i heat it up i'm gonna put stuff into it to cook right it's stainless you can't truly season it but you can make it where it works better okay and by leaving that little bit of light coating on there I know it's there, I know it's a contamination, but it's also, it's sealing it up, okay? So whenever I put the boiling water into it, it comes right off. So it's actually, actually acting like a, uh, a disposable coating, you know, to come out of it and get it off of it. Now I could do like Sean Kelly and just turn it upside down on the fire and heat it up and let the heat kill and sterilize and any little giblets, let it just cook solid in there and you know, be carbon, it'll flake off. True. You know, and that is one method of doing it. I, I have seen that. I remember old guys that never washed a skillet. <laughs> they would just, we got done eating the food out of it, they'd turn around and stick it on top of the fire and let it burn for three or four minutes, take it out and take a stick and wall it out and stick it back, take a stick, wall it out, and that's close enough. And things were black as coal and looked like they had, you know, charcoal in them. They didn't produce real good food, though. But he didn't do a lot of maintenance, but he wasn't renowned for being a cook either. So, with this Pathfinder skillet and its folding handle and its lid, now let's talk about this lid a second. You see how that's a recessed lid? Reminds me of the top of a Dutch oven. I wonder if I can broil with this. Put a thin piece of meat on the bottom and then put hot coals on top of this and set it on top of it and let it melt cheese on something or whatever that way and be able to lift it off. See? Could I take it and dig down a bit where this sits down a little lower in the ground very stably, hold the lid down the stick and rake coals onto it and bake in this something like a small piece of bread, a brownie, a thin layer of brownie or something like that. Could have baked in it. I don't know. I'm going to try it. Haven't tried it before, but I look at the design. That's one thing that's kind of sold me on it. One, it's got that heavy bottom, so it cooks more evenly. Two, the folding handle is very handy. And three, that cold lid, that just, that just begs to be tried for me. You know, because I've used the cold lid before on the bush pot. For that type thing remember the uh bush pot stove that goes on the bottom of it i filled that through full of hot coals before and sat it on top of the lid and let that heat down into it to bake breads because i just wanted the bottom warm so what if i was to take and put a biscuit in here heat the bottom up till it was about right temperature and sit up here and then sit Something like that on top of this lid to hold the heat. Something I could lift off and on. Could I bake bread in it? Because most bread works that way. Yes, Nugget. Nugget knows I'm cooking and I ain't got him out here. 
Yes, I have already fed him, and yes, I'm going to let him come out in a minute. But when I'm trying to work around this stove, Nugget is just sniff, 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 sniff. And I'm scared he's going to stick his nose to it, to be honest. So when I'm using the stove, I don't let Nugget near it. I had a real close call one time where I had a pan up there, and he went and stick his nose in the pan, and it, it would have been really bad. So a fire, he knows, and he respects and stays away from it. But the stove, he don't seem to connect that, that that's fire. So, you know joys of parenting but anyway back to so good little product I like it and I think it's gonna be great I'm gonna make me a cover for this here pretty quick to carry mine in the field but uh, yeah I like it hope you enjoyed this guys my rambling this morning but it's wet and it's irky and it's about 62 degrees and half the stuff I want to do they ain't gonna be able to do so we improvise hope you enjoyed it anyway Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.